This is the NSC DBE grade 12 mathematics paper two, question eight, which is Euclidean geometry. Question eight, the information uh, in the O is the center of the circle. So it's the center. MNPR is a cyclic quad. MNPR is a cyclic quad. And SN, SN is the diameter. That's the diameter. Ord MS and OR are drawn, and M2 is equal to 64, and that's given. Question 8.1.1. Uh, it wants to know angle P. What is angle P? Determine giving reasons the size of the following angles. Angle P is over here. This one fairly straightforward. They, it was given that MNPR is a cyclic quad. And we know that opposite angles of a cyclic quad add up to 180. So 64 plus angle P must add up to 180. Let's write it. Therefore, for our proof, 8.1.1, angle P is 180 minus 64, which equals 116 degrees. And uh, the reason is opposite angles, a cyclic quad. Okay. 8.1.2. Once angle M, once angle M. So we had that angle P was 116 from a previous question. We know that this is 64. And we were given that SN is the diameter. SN is the diameter of the circle. So we know that angles subtended by a diameter are 90 degrees. So again, it's a very quick. Uh, oh, it wants M1. Just the M1. OK. How do we write that in? We'd say, well, M1. Angle M1 is equal to 90 degrees minus 64 degrees, which is 26 degrees. And this is because angles sub tended by diam is equal to 90 degrees. Okay. O1. O1. Over here. Well, we have, just put this in for me, we had this was 26 degrees over here. And if we look at, maybe if we look at from arc SR, there's an angle that is subtended into the center and is also subtended to the edge of the circle. So there's an angle we know that the angle at center is equal to two times the angle at the circumference. So we can immediately see that our angle O1 is just going to be double angle M. 8.1.2, O1, so one is equal to 26 times two, which equals 52 degrees. And angles at center equal two times angles at circumference. All right, that's 
8.2, question 8.2, I have over here, information, so A, B, G is drawn, A, triangle A, B, G, D and E are the midpoints, so we're working with the midpoint formula of, the, of A, B, and A, G, A, G, and B, G are produced, A, G, a, G is produced to C here, and B, G is produced to H. So the word produced just means it's straight lines. And if you see the word produced, they're just telling you that you're working with straight lines. F is a point on B, C. Where is F? Oh, down here. F is a point of BC that makes FG parallel to HC. Right, that's all the information. 8.2.1. It, it wants to know why DE is, is going to be parallel to BH. Okay, well, I'll just... BH is all the way there, but uh, we're going to look at it at the triangle ABG. This triangle ABG. So it's the answer is it's the midpoint theorem. Uh, the midpoint theorem states that if we have a triangle and D and E here, split so if d splits a b in half and e splits a c in half if that's true we have two triangles then the bottom line will be double the size of the middle line double this double the length and it will also be true that they will be parallel so it's a case of a midpoint theorem so Okay. 8.2.2. It's further given that FC, F, where is our F? FC over BF. Okay, so that side of the triangle BCH is a quarter. So this will be in a ratio of one to four. And DE. Is D over here is equal to three x plus nope not plus three x minus one G H that little line over there is equal to x plus one. Calculate with reasons the value of x. Okay, it wants 8.2.2, what is x? Well, we know from the previous question that if DE is 3x minus 1, then BG must be two of those, 2 times 3x minus 1. It has to be. And then we can use prop theorem from there to solve for x. Let's first get that uh, proof down. So DE is equal to 3x minus 1. Therefore, BG must be 2 times 3x minus 1 because of midpoint theorem which is, uh, you can put as midpoint theorem as your proof. Just make that uh, 6x minus 2. It's just in a more simplified version of it. 6x minus 2. And then because the triangle BCH has these parallel lines were given. So B, I just drawn BCH upright. 
Because it's got those parallel lines, we can use prop theorem. So therefore, any of the combinations of prop theorem can be applied. So if we had parallel lines, then we could either have C or this, uh, this was F and this was G. So we either have a situation where FC over CB is equal to GH over HB, or we have a situation in the top ones over the full length. Let's just give examples of these things. Or we have a situation, uh, is there a third, third one would be, this is in proportion to, the bottom one is in proportion to the one on the top. Okay, and all of these are reversible, of course. If you do, as long as you, if you start in this first one, example in this triangle, if you start on the FC, then you need to start on GH on the other side. That's the important part, order matters in proportion. So looking at our triangle, well, we've been given that FC is one. So FC over BF, if we're on the other side of the triangle would be equal to GH over BG. B G. And we have everything we need. So FC would be one over four is equal to X minus, excuse me, plus one over six X minus two. And we just cross multiply both at the same time. So one times six X minus two is just six X minus two. And four times X plus one is just four X plus four. Bring all the x's to the left, minus 4 on both sides, so 6x minus 4x. And bring all the numbers, the constants to the right, plus 2 on both sides, 4 plus 2. So we end up with 6x minus 4x is 2x, and it's equal to 4 plus 2, which is 6. Divide both sides by 2. x is, this cancels out on the left, so x is equal to 3. This is uh, using prop theorem. That concludes question eight of the November 2022 NSC exam.